And welcome on in to another NHL season preview show. Uh, today we will be talking all about the Buffalo Sabres, uh, what they did in the offseason, uh, what their roster looks like, uh, what their future here looks like uh, in this upcoming season. Uh, Tim, of course, has been on um, shows uh, on the past on the channel, a uh, big supporter of the channel, handicapper at Picks and Parlays. DJ has also been on the channel before, especially during the Sabres uh, preview show last year. Uh, you can find him, DJ underscore Mitchell. Both uh, people you'll be able to find their Twitter links in the description below. So make sure to give them a follow. Uh, DJ, you're also doing season preview shows uh, going over all uh, 32 teams. Uh, and your preview shows are a bit more for the fantasy side aspect, but uh, yeah, a lot yeah. of people really like that. So uh, that's awesome. Yeah, model-based predictions for teams and fantasy. But so far, uh, I, I've only done two so far, and it was Anaheim and Arizona. And it's like the sports books are just like, hey, if you want to give us money, uh, you know, say Arizona's going to make the playoffs, we'll take it. So it's kind of like not much to cover there. The teams are just truly terrible. Um, yeah. So maybe we'll yeah. get a little more in the betting, but just, yeah, a lot more fantasy focus when you're talking about those teams. It's like, uh, you know, players that maybe we forgot about, players that maybe we uh, – aren't thinking of when we're drafting yet. So we'll, we'll get into that though. We'll yeah, definitely check it out if you're interested. And I got Boston and Buffalo coming tomorrow, the next day. Awesome. We will get right started here. Uh, taking a look at the additions and the subtractions uh, here in the off season for the Buffalo Sabres uh, and the Sabres didn't really go crazy this off season. Uh, they have a smaller list here. A lot of depth guys, Craig Anderson, uh, past his uh, prime here. Uh, it was uh, time for him to retire. Uh, Subban, uh, Ilya Labushkin, uh, that's a player I liked uh, on the Sabres. Uh, definitely um, watched some highlights of his uh, in games that the Sabres won for me. Uh, so uh, that's, a, I guess, a depth, a depth piece as well. Uh, the other two guys, more AHLers. Uh, and the the additions to Karski, Connor Clifton uh, is a, an addition there on defense. Eric Johnson, another addition on defense. Uh, and then uh, Kale Clegg and Devin Cooley. Not a whole lot from Buffalo in the offseason. I see a couple defensive additions, uh, which is something they need, obviously, and to improve the defense. But not really a whole lot here overall uh, in the offseason. Tim, we'll go to you first this time. Additions and subtractions. Uh, what do you think about the uh, Sabres offseason? Yeah, they didn't make much, many moves, and I didn't think they really had to. Um, they, they're they a team that just have a bunch of young talent that they're going to try to build around. Um, Labushkin was all right. I, I think the additions of Clifton and Johnson really kind of just trump over him. Um, they were better players than him anyway. Um, and I don't really – yeah, we didn't really lose much. Craig Anderson was retiring. Subban, I forgot he was even on the roster. And the other two guys – played mostly for Rochester. So uh, I'm not really worried about that. I think we got some nice depth pieces. I, the Dustin Tukarski doesn't really make sense to me, but, um, but I, I, but I like the two younger guys, but um, they didn't really need to do much. We'll talk about their, their lineups in a minute and why they didn't really have to go crazy, but it, uh, they were struggling last year in the defensive positioning. Clifton and Johnson definitely should help out with all of that. Tukarski is just, Depth. You can never have too many goalies. Correct. Uh, in, 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 on a team ever. Uh, DJ additions, subtractions. What do you think here of uh, the Sabres offseason? Yeah, they identified their biggest need, which was right-handed defenseman who can kill penalties and hopefully help. Uh, you know, the Dalvin's was, was unreal. I'm not even gonna you mm -hmm. know say anything too negative there, but definitely help Owen Power with what he did poorly. Like I'm not saying he was bad. He was very good at some things, but the things he was bad at, Johnson and Clifton could definitely help at. Connor Clifton is definitely a penalty kill specialist. I mean, he was one of the best in the NHL, albeit on Boston, who was yeah. a very good defensive team. Um, they really needed that. And this is just going to help those young goaltenders, hopefully keep guys out in front of, you know, from getting in front of the net too often. Um, I think they knew that that could be a problem for Levi and Lukanen going into the year. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I think, you know, Subban played in Rochester. He goes, he was good in the playoffs. I think he needed a fresh start. Tokarski maybe a bit more sound in net in Rochester. I think like the Sabres clearly read the Tampa Bay playbook on build a winner in the AHL and try to like continue that winning culture. So as those players come in, um, so they've really taken a big, 
onus on having a better AHL team in Rochester. So I think the Carthy will be like one of the better AHL goalies is the plan there. And then nothing else really matters. Uh, Labushkin, I think, is truly terrible. And I just don't think he really fit the team culture. I, I like A, he was bad. Um, this is definitely getting way too inside baseball. But I just remember I had a friend that like ran into him at the airport when they went on the all-star break. And Labushkin was like one of the only players not going with all the other Sabres down to like Putacan or whatever. And, and it was just like, even if you know he's married, he has kids. I get it. Like you want to take the kids somewhere. Like definitely great. Like no big deal. But I think the Sabres have this like really, really good core of players that are very, very tight together. Mm -hmm. And he just didn't fit in that mix as well. Um, so I think they were just like, you know what? He makes sense to move, give him a better opportunity than a seventh defenseman in Anaheim. He can actually play and reestablish himself. It was just a win-win um, for sure. So I, I think that the team is just much better, especially in a penalty killing note going forward, which is a huge glaring need. Yeah, you know, you know Lubushkin also had a little bit like rough defensive stats last year. He wasn't – his defensive numbers were not up to the par of the rest of the guys on the team. Yeah, he just never really found his his groove. Like, he could hit. That was cool. And, like, that's why you remember him from some of the yeah. games. Like, whoa, he, like he's huge, right? Yeah, probably he a big like, hit here. He had, like yeah. – didn't he have, like, one game-winning goal? Yeah, then, yeah, yeah. He had the one game-winning goal in overtime. I have no idea what was on the ice. Uh, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, it's, like, like mm. a couple of moments we remember, but, like, Overall, every statistic, everything you could find would tell you that he was, uh, you know, a negative to the roster in, in most situations. But I think he could definitely find himself in Anaheim where it's like, yeah. honestly, if he's not a complete cone, he'll be an improvement on that roster. So, um, I, you know, I think it's a win-win, like I said, but this team is going to be better. But what does better really mean? When you talk about, you know, we'll, we'll get to it going forward, but it's going to be, I think a lot of Sabres fans are mad too. I think most Sabres fans watching could be like, why didn't they do more? Like we're going into the season with two goalies who have never started like mm -hmm. above 30 games in a season or 20 games, wherever it is. And it's like, yeah, we'll get to it. You know, I think it's yeah. fine yes. too. I'm pretty, yes. pretty we'll definitely ahead. talk about the goalies and we'll start kind of here. Upcoming free agents here for the Sabres. They have a big list. Yeah. Uh, now a lot of these guys uh, may find themselves on the way out. A lot of them are RFAs. So you'll be able to easily resign them for the most part. Uh, looking at it here. Uh, if I'm the Sabres, uh, Owen Power and Rasmus Dahlin are oh, yeah. the first two guys that I'm focusing on re-signing. Uh, those are the two, main two. Obviously, Owen Power and RFA, so he's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, you can deal with that was him. Yeah, Dahlin also an RFA, but he's more likely to get offer sheeted if the Sabres did not offer him enough money. He's more likely, I think, to get offer sheeted, but... I think the Sabres will get both of those done. Uh, those are the two they should focus on. When it comes to the goalies, uh, Cooley and Tokarski, both UFAs. Carmi also UFA. Uh, I'm sure the Sabres are fine with letting them walk. Mm -hmm. uh, Ukapekalukunen, RFA, you might want to get him signed to a cheap uh, extension. Uh, and then on the left side with the forwards, uh, I have Victor Olofsson there. And I know we might get into a little bit of a, not a disagreement, but... Um, I value Victor Olofsson high. If uh, the Wild had has, if this if the Buffalo Sabers do not want Victor Olofsson, uh, please give Bill Guerin a call. I would happily take Olofsson uh, in Minnesota. Uh, he is a UFA uh, coming up here. So obviously, Darlene Power, the main uh, two guys of the Sabers, will be focusing on DJ upcoming free agents. Who do you think the Sabers should focus on re-signing? Who are you okay if they let go? Uh, big list here. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, uh, I guess we'll start with the forwards. I mean, first off, I, I would trade Victor Olofsson. Like, I don't love it as much as a lot of Sabres media who seemingly have already discarded him as a player. Like, he's definitely valuable. And I think Minnesota really would be a perfect fit for him to go in. And like, that's a team that just, like, Kaprizov does so much and just gets so little in return sometimes where it's like, man, if they just had a, a more pure goal scorer, I think that'd be a good fit. Uh, Gergensen's, I was really surprised to see back. I'm hit or miss on him either way. I think he's a good defensive. I mean, he's a really good defensive forward, and we need those. So I'm happy, happy to have him stay. Ogposo, uh, I can't believe he's even still playing. Like, you know, he's been good. He was really good last year. Just those head injuries, have, this just surprised me that he just continues to be able to go. So I'm happy to have him. Yost, probably gone. Middlestead, I think he'll definitely be back. Krebs, it, it feels like a trade piece to me. Like, really good power play specialist, not big enough role. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I mean, I, the defense will just kind of get right to it with Dolly and Power. I think there's a 0% chance they're not signed by opening night. 
Um, mm -hmm. I think the Sabres are waiting for, as a PR stunt more than anything to get more ticket sales, as I, I kind of mentioned to you guys. So I'm not worried about them at all. Dali has been like reported, signed already, but we haven't seen it. Um, all the other defensemen, I, I don't care. Like, Eric Johnson's going to retire. Uh, we He's literally like said that, I guess, to like Jeremy Roenick or something. I heard it on a podcast that like Eric Johnson's playing like one more year in con. Um, and then Yoko Haru, I'd I, I like that. It's a prove it type of situation. But actually, with him and you'll go back up looking at it, it, it's show me a year for them. All right. Tim, upcoming free agents for the Sabres. Who do you want them to resign the most here? Uh, I, I I do like Olson. I think he's a good on the a good solid piece for the second line because obviously you're not touching the first line. Uh, on that on, on the forwards list, Middlestad I think should be a, a sign piece, and I I think Krebs is just a scrappy. I, I like Krebs as a player. I think that was a nice piece that we got from Vegas in the trade. Um, so I I do like Krebs as like a fourth liner or something in there, third liner. Uh, nothing crazy in terms of uh, size of the contract, but. Get him for a little bit. I think he could definitely be a nice piece to it. Um, yeah, Dolly and Power, I'm not worried about it. You sign your number one overall picks. Um, when you get those, you you don't get let those go. Uh, the other four, I mean, Johnson, we'll see how he goes this year. Um, other than that, ha Yoki Haru, we'll see. Bryson, I think, could be uh, a piece that Buffalo tries to hold on to. Stillman, we'll see. I know they brought him in during the uh, trade deadline last year. I, I think Dolly and Power are obviously the, the number one and number two priority. Um, other than that, I think there's other defensemen. If you needed to go get them, you can go get them. And then for the goalies, uh, UPL is the only one that I'd really be – I want to sign because I think in the future you see a uh, Levi and UPL duo, and they could be really, really solid. It could be one of the better uh, goalie tangents in a couple of years. So I, I would definitely sign Uka Pekalukinen. Comrie – He's up in the air. He didn't really have that great of a season last year, but he was also dealt with injuries. Um, Tukarski, he's a dub piece. He's easily replaceable. Um, so prioritize the two big defenders, U UPL, Middlestad, Olsen, and Krebs. All right. Moving along to possible lineup here for the Sabres. Uh, of course, uh, players will move around. Guys will come in and train in camp. Uh, and surprise people and um, in spring training. Uh, so there'll be uh, guys that'll come up here. The goalies is the question mark for the Sabres. Uh, they currently have those four go four goaltenders uh, under contract here. Tukarski, I have his name there, but he's going to be in the AHL unless there's yep. massive injuries uh, or unless the Sabres make a trade of some kind uh, to remove a goaltender. Um, overall, I like the forward lineup. Uh, I like the depth there. Uh, Greenway. Um, Greenway, when he plays to his full ability, um, he can be uh, a nightmare to play against. Uh, when he comes and uses his body, uh, uh, he can be a nightmare to play against. The issue is, is that a lot of nights, he just kind of stands around. Uh, that's what I noticed from Greenway. Uh, I was happy for him to move on. I like the second line. Uh, as I've already said, Olafson, uh, I really like him as a player. Um, defense, um, I think the defensemen uh, are going to take a step forward here this year for the Sabres, uh, which is something they desperately need if they want to break the playoff drought, which we'll get to here in a second. Goaltenders, this is the big thing, uh, as I mentioned. Now, there might be some disagreement here. Uh, for me, if I'm the Sabres, I don't rush Devin Levi. Uh, you don't want to rush your young goaltender. Minnesota, they're not rushing, uh, I guess, for Wallstead. Detroit's not uh, rushing uh, Sebastian Casa. Askarov in Nashville will leave him aside. But for me, if I'm the Sabres, I know they want to break the play uh, playoff drought. But Devin Levi could be a franchise-type goaltender. I'm If I'm the Sabres, I'm very... Um, I, I won't, wouldn't want to rush him. So I want to see what Uka Pekalukinen can do. Uh, and I would have Eric Comrie as a backup, uh, potentially the third goaltender. Uh, and Levi, um, I, I would not have Levi as a starting goaltender. That's just my thoughts. But um, Tim, we'll go to you second this time. Possible lineup here for the Sabres. Uh, what do you think about it? 
this year? Uh, I think if they go up to their potential, I think the top line could be the best line in hockey. Uh, if they have a season like they did last year, and I, I really think Thompson's got the the ceiling of being the MVP. Uh, and then Tuck and Skinner, as long as as long as they have the seasons they had last year, that, that's going to be a really solid line. I really like Olsen, uh Cousins, middle stat line. That's going to be the key for Buffalo for in order to, for them to have a really good season. That second line needs to be pretty. I'm not going to say close to the first line, but they've got to be able to produce uh, close to them. And then the the th- third and fourth line just needs to be able to hold their own. Uh, I really do like Paterka. I think he's going to be a, a, a good piece. Um, I think he's going to have a, a very productive year. You could probably make some uh, money on point props and stuff from Paterka this year. I, I think that he'll be one of the bigger guys. The fourth line just needs to hold on um, and, and, get, and be able to get the first line back out there. Defense definitely looks a lot better than last year, uh, being able to replace a couple of those pieces. Darlene and Power are only going to get better with time. Darlene was – one of the best defensemen, what was it, top three in, or should have been top three in the uh, defensive players for last year. Uh, Power with another year underneath his belt. I think that's going to be really, really good for him. And then and goaltending, I, I, I know you're, you're against it. I think Levi's ready. Um, you saw how he looked in uh, the end of regular season last year. There was a couple of games he, he looked really, really solid. Um even if he's a one, if you know, even if it's a one A one B, or even if he's the backup this year behind U- UPL, um, I do think he should be up in the roster just so that he can get the experience. I think it would be a little bit more valuable for him to be up in the NHL, really see the pace of the game a lot more than playing in the AHL um, and, and actually getting reps. But um, I think Levi should be up there. Comrie will be the third, and Tukarski's an AHL guy unless something really, really wrong happens. Um, but I do like the goalie duo of UPL and Levi, and I, I know I was looking at, uh, at at futures that we'll look at, and I think Levi could be on a list. Okay, before we get to DJ, the Sabres are going to have to do something with Comrie, though, because most teams do not want to hold three goaltenders. So Comrie, Levi's going to be Comrie up might there. be one of those that uh, he's in the AHL, but they'll get him on a quick flight if they need him. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he would get, have to go through waivers or whatever, but I guess it's not a main a main issue for the Sabres. No. DJ, possible lineup here for the Sabres. Uh, what do you think here? Yeah, uh, I guess we'll just continue with the goalie talk quickly. I mean, a lot of more teams will actually run three goalies than we're used to. I think the Sabres could be in that category if Comrie's truly ready. I don't know what – honestly, I just I don't even know what happened there. Like – it was a lot worse than I expected, and just luckily we had Craig Anderson and others step up and be at least not completely terrible. Um, so I'm expecting all three of them to get starts. Tikarski to be in the AHL. Levi will – he just – I mean, you just can't, like, give him 50 games, I don't think, which is a big problem for his fantasy stock, which I don't know. I haven't really drafted any season-long, like, regular leagues yet, but um, I assume he's going to be going way too early. I think a best indicator for how good the Sabres are is how many games he plays, because if he's playing really well, that would mean that he plays more games. And that would mean the Sabres go from, you know, a team that was an offensive juggernaut, but A, couldn't play well defensively and B, stop the puck to maybe fixing some of those problems uh, as far as stopping the puck. So the best indicator is like, I think if he's over 35, 40 games, you're probably, this is a playoff team for sure. I think he really is going to be around that 30, 35 mark though, just because a, he could struggle a little bit. Like we can't just anoint this guy, the clear savior before we've really seen it. And B, I just think that the Sabres want to run three goalies and that's why we have all three goalies here. Um, defense. I, I think Clifton's going to be with power personally, but I don't really care either way. Um, I just think that what power did poorly was that I kind of mentioned is he doesn't make the best first decision, breaking out the puck from the defensive zone when he doesn't have time and space. And that's just because he always had time and space in college. He was just so much better than everyone else that he never had to worry about it. He could just take two strides away from everyone else and be gone. It doesn't happen in the NHL. And it just takes time to learn that. And some defensemen figured out very quickly. But even Eric Carlson took some time. Even Dalin took a lot of time with that. Like, it's not an overnight fix. So it's not a negative on him as much as he just needs a guy that can also, in the defensive zone, kind of you know help a little bit more than we had last year. Um, forwards, I'm also very, very high on Paterka. Uh, I don't think he's like – 
you know, a slam dunk fantasy pick maybe because he isn't going to probably be on the first power play, but I do think he's very underutilized and like should be considered as maybe a last round flyer. Um, I, I just think he's just a better hockey player than Olofsson in every category besides the actual shooting of the puck, but you know, he's going to be able to shoot the puck more than Olofsson because of how much better he is on the ice. So I, I think other than that, everything makes perfect sense to me. Um, Jordan Greenway really is probably like the biggest question mark this year. Like, do we have a third line power forward that's going to produce and be, um, you know, a menace defensively, or do we have a third line player that we paid a draft pick to get and are overpaying because he's actually useless? And we really don't know for sure. I'm optimistic because I think it's the right spot for him. And I think that like, he's going to be fully healthy, which he just never was last year. Um, I think, you know, all these hockey players rush themselves back from injuries. He rushed himself back from an injury. He missed the entire offseason training. Now he should be ready to go. I have nothing to say about the top line that hasn't already been said. I mean, if Thompson wins MVP, I'd probably eat my hat because he's just never going to be as good as McDavid. But other than that, I think, yeah, it's like if this line is produces even close to last year, it's going to be um, another very, very fun season in Buffalo, whether it's, you know, playoffs and beyond is, is kind of up for debate. But, um, yeah, I think this roster is really, really strong. I think Olofsson is likely going to be gone because I think some team that isn't scoring will overpay, and that's Kevin Adams' bet mm-hmm. is that, you know, as a team struggles early on in the season and they can't find the back of the net, they're just going to be looking around. Free agency has been scooped. Well, I guess we're going to go to Buffalo, give them a call, and try to get Victor Olofsson, and maybe we could get another asset. Maybe we, maybe that at that point we decide on goaltending not being there. You know, so hard to know if, if this is going to be where it ends up. But I, overall, I think this is probably – uh, yet again, one of the best offensive teams in hockey, and it just it's all going to come down to goaltending. I said the exact same thing last year. I'm like, this team could be a playoff team if goaltending's good, and the goaltending was bad, and they still almost made it. So I think it's just a lot to say about what this team could be going forward. Perfect. And we'll go to the final segment of the show, uh, looking at future bets for this season. Uh, like DJ said earlier, a lot of people are really high in the Sabres this year. Uh, minus 120 to make the playoffs. Uh, the Sabres, of course, Tim, cover your ears. Tied with the New York Jets. Uh, I already for, knew uh, that. You don't have to. North American sports uh, playoff drought of 12 well, years. Well, to be fair, before last postseason, it was the Sacramento Kings. That was a big drought. but Yes, but now it's the Buffalo Sabres and the New York Jets. Uh, both teams will obviously be looking to end that uh, those droughts this year. Uh, the Sabres uh, favored it to make the playoffs slightly at minus 120. Point total, 92 and a half here. Uh, who will have more points? I already discussed this on the show yesterday uh, on the Ottawa show. I do like Buffalo at minus 125. Um, I think Buffalo is just a step ahead of the Ottawa Senators. Um, so I, I would take that Buffalo minus 125. Granado to win Jack Adams at plus 1,000. Uh, if this Sabres team takes a huge step forward, uh, takes a big step forward, I could see him potentially uh, getting some votes there. Darlene to win the Norris plus 800 is also a good look. Levi wins 23 and a half. Now, if DJ's right and he plays around 35 games, uh, 23, uh, 24 wins might be a little tough uh, unless he goes 24 and 11. Um, so Levi wins 23 and a half Thompson goals, 43 and a half uh, Thompson had 47 last year. Uh, I would look at the over 47 or over 43 and a half. We are seeing goal scoring rising in the NHL the last few years. So I'm fine with taking over 43 and a half goals here, uh, for the Sabres. Big question is, do they make the playoffs? And I think, Yes. I think this is the year the Buffalo Sabres will make the playoffs. Minus 120, not a whole lot of value here for me, but I think they break the streak. DJ, going to you second this time. Buffalo Sabres future bets. The big question, do you think your Sabres break the playoff drought and make the playoffs this year? I mean, I'm going to say yes, but I don't – it's not like I'm going crazy about it. Um, You know, I'm not like – like we have them, I saw to say what our model has. We have them for 95 points. So we have the over, and I think 95 points is likely going to be a playoff spot. So using the math and just also considering that our model is very likely giving them a bit of a downgrade in net comparatively to like anywhere even near a ceiling. So like if you're saying like what's the worst outcome for goaltending, that's probably what our model is basically thinking, because 
that doesn't really know Devin Levi. You can like feed it college stats, but it's going to just say he's bad still because <laughs> he just hasn't played in the NHL very much. So um, I, I likely think that they make it in. I still think the point total is just a better bet. Like I know you're thinking like, oh, well, like over 92 and a half make the playoffs, you know, but I I still think that that's still probably like, you know, 95 could could be like the number that gets in and 94, 93, 94 could be. So I still think like, I think they're the same odds, right? Yeah. yeah I, I'd point. rather just, yeah, like the 92 and a half over and the yes play. I, I think I'd rather just take the over on the points because um, I still think the league's going to be pretty, like it was last year, like top heavy, bottom heavy um, as teams that tanked last year and will just continue to be terrible. Um, other than that, yeah, you know, make the playoffs. Our model doesn't like any of the other bets really. Uh, it thinks that the closest one to the, correct answer is Stanley cup at what we have at 38 to one and 35 to one. We have it directly on the minus minus one twenty for playoffs and we have it at plus or 13 to one for division instead of the nine to one. So uh, yeah, I think the point total is the best model prediction. Um, and then if you want to get crazy with the cup, I mean, it's just like, that's the closest. And then player wise, I think if you're betting any of these things that you have listed, it's just Granado to win the Jack Adams, like, uh, you know, Breaking, breaking that playoff drought probably means a lot more to the hockey bros than it does to like reality. So I think him getting that trophy, getting that award, just because the you know the old men in hockey will vote for it type of feeling, rather than you know if he's actually a good coach or not, because it truly doesn't matter for this award. Um, if they make the playoffs, he wins. So I think if you're just saying like I'm going to bet make the playoffs, but I could also bet Granado to win Jack Adams, I think you're just completely taking the wrong bet there. I think if they make the playoffs, he's just winning that award. Um, I might actually try to find it if I can, but New York doesn't really let us bet that stuff. Um, the only other maybe thing I'd mention at all is um, the player. Yeah, I think Jeff Skinner for points is the one that gets forgotten about the most. And I don't know actually if I can even find it right now because they don't have too many things listed here. But if you can find it, I think, especially on apps like, you know, your underdogs and your prize picks and whatnot, like, yeah, he's not on there, I don't think. But, um, if you can pair it with something else, especially like you can pair it with Tage, you can pair it with Tuck. Like they're so heavily correlated that I would be really high on it myself. Like I, and I think Jeff Skinner is the one that always gets sort of the, oh, like you know Tuck and Tuck and Tage are. It's like well they, they all play together and like mm-hmm. his ceiling is just as high as you know at least Tuck. So um, I know point projections have them off normally, but our model doesn't think that. Our model thinks that like Tuck and Skinner are pretty similar as far as their potential output. So that'd be the only thing other I mentioned. All right, cool. How more points, Buffalo or Ottawa? Do you have an opinion there? Uh, I mean, I wouldn't bet it myself. It just kind of feels useless. Like, I, I just feel like these are two, these are the two teams fighting for the same playoff spot. Probably, I, I wouldn't bet it, but I mean, I, I hope it's Buffalo. You know, but I don't think it. I don't think it's a, like when they're both negatives like that, and one's minus one twenty five, and it's like, man, that thing is pretty bad. So I would just rather look elsewhere. Like, I think you just take like. You know, Don Grado to win the Jack Adams is like just far and away, I think, the best bet on the board for the Sabres in any capacity. Awesome. Tim, future bets for the Sabres. What do you think here? Uh, oh, you you already, you already know the one bet I've already made because I make it every year. Um, I I already put my, what is it, $6.50 donation on the uh, Sabres to win the Cup. Uh, I, I do it every year. Um, they, you know, it's not a crazy bet this year. Um. The point, the point total, I honestly think this team could be 100 point total. Like you, you look at it, you look how they looked last year, and I think only I think the experience because it's not an old team; it's a very young team. The experience from last year, I think some of those games that could have went opposite directions. I know there was like an overtime loss to Chicago and blowing a lead here and goaltending allowing. They're they're not going to have and as many mistakes as they did last year. I think they're going to be a lot more uh, of a cleaner hockey team. So I do think they'll go over the total. Um, I'm really hoping they make the playoffs. I mean, the, realistically, I would like to see them win at least one playoff game. That that's that's kind of my overall hope for this year. I'm not going crazy. Would it be crazy if they won a series? Yes, I would be super excited. But I'm just I, I'm hoping they win at least one game in the playoffs. Um, I'm not. I would. I wouldn't take President's Trophy, even though I think that's crazy. Um, to think that they'll be that good. I think, honestly, Toronto probably wins that one. That's my opinion. Um, division, same deal. I think Toronto wins the division. Conference, 17-1. to 1. I think there's a couple of teams that are just a little bit more ahead of Buffalo, but um, maybe next year uh, well, those will be actual like solidified bets. I did put the cup. 
Uh, I think Thompson could score 50 plus this year. Uh, he had a really, really good last year. Um, I think he continues into this year. Levi wins. I would be careful with just because they have four roster goalies on the roster. And I don't know what exactly they want to do with Levi. No, in the Sabres, they'll end up playing him 50 games. So if they do, he had, if they, if they do, he has to have a 500 record, but I don't think he plays that much. I don't think they should play him that much. Uh, Darlene to win the Norris will be on my card. Levi to win Calder. I was looking at, um, just because I would, I, I'm not going to, obviously I'm not betting, um, the Chicago guy. Uh, Bedard at minus 145. <laughs> I, and it's the same deal with Victor women, Yana and the, uh, NBA. I'm not betting that. Um, I, I think both those chalky rookie of the years don't win. Uh, so I would take a shot with my boy Levi. Uh, Granado, I think Granado, I know he got a lot of crap last year. I think he did a really good job with the young players. Um, and I think he's only going to help develop them even more. If they make the playoffs, as DJ said, he probably wins that unless you have a team like Boston that goes off again that scored, what, 120 points last year. Um, if you get another team like that, I think it kind of goes to them. But if Buffalo makes the playoffs and there's not a team that goes off, Granado should win it. And then I'm not I'm not bothering with who will score more, uh, who will have more points. Um, that's kind of taken care of, of do they make the playoffs. Um, and I think if Buffalo makes the playoffs, obviously they have more points than Ottawa. So um, realistically this year, I hope to see them in a first round playoffs against like a Toronto. And that would be, that'd be ideal. All right. One more thing I wanted to say about future bets. I didn't mention one thing going into the season that I'll be looking at for the Sabres uh, is the Sabres on the road as road dogs. Yes. I can't tell you how many times last year I was cashing plus 140, plus 160, plus 170s on the Buffalo Sabres on the road. Of yes. course, it's a new year this year, uh, but if I'm seeing the Sabres at plus 140, plus 160 on the road uh, early on in the season, uh, you know where I'll be looking. Uh, I, I, I do want to I do want to make one kind of little reference uh, for any baseball people. I think the Buffalo Sabres this year will be the same or, well, I don't think they're going to be as good, but they are the Baltimore Orioles of the NHL. They're a very, very young roster that has a very, very high upside. Now, do I think they're going to be the best team in the East? No, but they have that much upside. They're a very young team. That's going to be exciting to watch. All right. And we will end it off there. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Don't go anywhere. Uh, we have Brandon uh, Sawyer coming to talk about the Sabres next. Uh, and joining me to discuss Buffalo is uh, Brandon Sawyer at B Sawyer Bets. Of course, you can find uh, his a link to his Twitter in the description below. Uh, Brandon, welcome on in uh, to come and discuss Buffalo. Um, we will jump right into it here. Uh, and we'll jump into the first segment. Uh, which is additions and subtractions here uh, for the Sabres. Uh, not a whole lot here compared to some other teams who have uh, some longer lists. Uh, but uh, what do you think here about Buffalo's offseason? Um, what, what, what are your opinions here? Yeah, thanks, Terry. I mean, like you said, it, it, it's not a ton. Um, you know, like we talk about another Atlantic team like Boston where – feels like it was changes every day. Um, you know, the only one that really stands out to me here is Connor Clifton coming in uh, from Boston. I think he's a good guy to add in uh, on the defense there. I mean, their offense, I don't think they really needed too many changes. You know, they got a young core right now. Uh, you know, you lost a couple guys, but it, it doesn't really concern me much. I, I expect it to kind of be the same this year with these younger guys stepping up. Yeah, for sure. Uh, small list here. Uh, like Johnson, adding Johnson to uh, some defensive depth. Uh, but not a lot of offense here, like you said. A really young team, uh, the Buffalo Sabres. Uh, looking at upcoming free agents, this list is a bit longer. Uh, what do you think here about the upcoming free agents for the Sabres? What should they focus on re-signing here? Yeah, I mean, to me, you know, the guys who stand out, Rasmus Dahlin, Owen Power. Um, you know, Casey Middlestad as well. Uh, all these guys are RFAs. I, I think these guys can be crucial pieces to their young core. Uh, I think you got to lock those three up for sure. A few of these other guys, you know, Eric Johnson, depending on the year he has, if you can get him back there on the D. Uh, 
you know, looking in, I don't know. We'll see how the year goes. You know, we'll touch on it. I'm high on Devin Levi, so we'll see what happens with looking in. But, uh, you know, those are kind of my guys to, to look at for this upcoming year. All right. Darlene's contract is going to be big. They're going to have so. to pay, but I think it's going to be yeah. worth it, man. I, I think it's tough. You, you can't lose a young guy like that right now. You know, you need him oh, there. Owen oh, Power should be still reasonable. Uh, but Darlene is going to be expensive. I'm um, ex uh, excited to see uh, what number he signs at, uh, Darlene. Uh, possible lineup here. Uh, Jack Quinn's supposed to be on the IR here to start the season. Uh, you touched on goaltenders. There's four of them. Uh, Tukarski probably will be in the AHL unless there's injuries here. But, yeah, the big question is is who's going to be the starting goaltender? Uh, are they going to give Levi the reins? Uh, what's happening there? Um, what are your thoughts here in the possible lineup for uh, Buffalo? So to me, I, you know, I love the top six, all six of those forwards, um, especially you look at that first line, they're going to score. They're just going to, you know, there's no denying that. Um, and then even you look at the, their defensemen, like we talked about, Darlene, Power, Samuelson, like they got some good guys there, even Eric Johnson, um, you know, and then like I was saying, I'm high on Devin Levi. I don't expect him to get the start right out of the gate. Uh, but like we'll touch on, I'm, I'm, I got a couple of futures that I'm looking at for him. I wouldn't be surprised, you know, Buffalo's goaltending situation was not solid last year, to say the least. Um, you know, they scored a lot of goals, but they let up a lot of goals, which as an over is better. I loved it. I was on them all year long. Um, they're a fun team to watch. But I think if they really want to make a run, they got to solidify that goalie position. And I think a guy like Devin Levi could fit with this young core. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see him get the start in that as the season goes on. All right. And, yeah, like you touched on, perfect segue. Future bets. Um, the Buffalo Sabres have missed the playoffs 12 years in a row, which is uh, the current – uh, longest playoff drought in the NHL. Uh, do you think this is the year? Are they going to make the playoffs? Obviously, it's at minus 120. Uh, so this is a really interesting team. The Sabres, uh, their playoff odds, uh, basically uh, minus 120, yes, minus 110, no. Uh, do you think they do it? I do. I do. I'm high on this team. You know, they just missed by a point last year. Um you know, their, their point total set at 92 and a half. I'm hammering that over. Uh, I even like, you know, I was looking at a hundred plus points plus 220. I saw on the other day. Um, I have them low 100s again. You know, we're talking about a tough Atlantic division with a lot of teams that are going to be in that low 100 range, I think. Um, but I think Buffalo takes that step up this year. Like I said, they were so close last year in, uh, you know, minus 120 to make the playoffs. I, I wish it was priced a little better, a little more value on it for me personally, because, you know, since the season ended last year, I've been all over that. Um, but I think, you know, it, it's priced right. I think they're going to make the playoffs for sure. I don't expect them to make much of a run. You know, I'm not really looking at win division, win conference, win the cup. You know, if they get out of the first round, I think that'd be great for them. I see them going into the first round, probably losing in six or seven. Uh, but again, it's early. It's early in the year. All right, perfect. Um, who will have more points, Buffalo or Ottawa? Uh, do you have any thoughts on that one? That's tough because I think these are going to both be fun teams this year. I expect them both to take a step up for sure. Uh, I would lean Buffalo. I don't know if the value is really there for me personally, but I, I lean Buffalo for sure. You know, I also, on that bottom list, there are some props we got. I like Dalian to win the Norris plus 800. Uh, I like Levi over 23 and a half wins. And I like Tage Thompson over 43 and a half goals. I like all three of those, not a ton of value on the Levi and Thompson props there. Uh, you know, Levi to win the call, they're at plus 1,200. That's one I've got down here. I may even mess around it and sprinkle a little bit on, on Levi to win the Vesna. Plus 5,000. Uh, it's a long shot. Don't get me wrong. 
but it's one of those maybe, maybe sprinkle a couple bucks on there plus five thousand. I wouldn't be surprised to see this kid come out and kind of take the lead by storm this year. Uh, I liked the I liked what I saw from him at the end of the year this past season. I know we didn't get in there much, but uh, you never know what's going to happen with goalies. You know, you never know. So plus five thousand, I think, is worth a look personally. All right, perfect. Uh, well, that's it. Uh, thanks for coming on here uh, to talk Buffalo Sabers with me. Uh, as I said, if you want to find more uh, from uh, Brandon, you can find his Twitter, or I guess I should call it X, uh, yeah. his Twitter or X link. Uh, of course, uh, you can find the link in the description below uh, to find more from him. Uh, but thanks for coming on. Thank you, Terry. I'm looking forward to a fun season, man. I think this is going to be a fun team. Appreciate you talking about it with me. No problem. Thank you, everyone, so much for watching this NHL season preview show. Uh, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons as we continue on breaking down all 32 NHL teams, which will lead to the regular season when the Getting Wild with Terry and Friends NHL betting show will return. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Of course, make sure to follow everyone in the description below that was on today's show uh, to show them some support. Thank you, everybody, for watching, and we'll see you on the next show.